Hello everyone, Master Zeno 1001 here, and in this getting started with 2.8 video, I wanted to show you how to use scripted expressions and nodes in order to create this effect in Blender 2.8. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Alright, so before we begin, I'm going to press X and delete the cube, Shift A, add some text. I'm just going to replace this text with the command that we're going to be um, discussing today. And also I'm going to offset it just a little bit make it centered and this is the command right here I actually found this through a bug report on the blender dev board but uh, since this is on my clipboard if we take this and we paste it inside of rotation you can see that this is the result it just creates a nice bobbing back and forth rotation motion and this is something that I'm always looking for uh, previously I was using uh, frame to drive it with multipliers in order to slow it down, which would just make it go on in perpetuity. But this one actually brings it back, which is also pretty cool. So right here, I actually split the window and made it into a uh, graph editor so that I can um, go in and mess with the drivers. Actually, I made a driver editor. Um, and you can also add modifiers on your drivers. So I'm going to add a um, limits here and we'll just make the minimum one. So now you'll see that it's only able to go so far before it stops. And also I can add something called a generator on this, which can make it more exponential. In fact, once I uncheck it and then check it back, it begins behaving the way it's supposed to. Um, you have to kind of fidget around with this a little bit for it to update. But there's some fun with uh, scripted expressions as you can see here. In fact, we can um, put it here as well. And we just have this uh, procedurally moving just up and down and also rotating. So I figured this would be the best way to just kind of introduce you guys to the uh, function that we're gonna be playing with. So with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and press Control N, make a new file. And we're just gonna delete the cube and insert a plane. We're just partying with a plane today. I'm going to jump over to the shaded view, which has a couple of extra windows for my liking. We'll go ahead and collapse the UV editor and the uh, file browser and go ahead and get started. So we'll jump this up into look dev mode, look at it from top view. For some reason, there's a hang here. Oh, there we go. And we'll just delete the world, add a new world. But I don't actually want to mess with the world. I want to mess with the shader. We'll just add a new shader here. And let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to need a texture coordinate. Then I'm going to need a texture gradient. Spherical gradients are just a fun time all around. We also want to interject a mapping in here. So I'm sure with Node Wrangler, I can actually create this sort of stuff really easy and on the fly, but just not using it um, to the maximum. Also really trying to close this out here. We're not gonna need that. However, uh, before I close that, I should have actually set the material to be additive, which you can do in the material panel. So I'll just use the hops helper for that. Promise not to use hops on this. So with a control shift click, I'm gonna put the viewer on this so I can look at it. And you know, we'll just scale this by two. And this isn't from notes or anything. I've just been doing this a lot lately. And we can actually give these both the same value or supposed to probably just put one uh, negative one and copy and paste that and that should be uh, fairly central the next thing from here is um, you know we probably want to actually go to rendered view and turn off overlays so that way we're just looking at really what's going on here and because it's additive the transparency is taking effect which is um, a big part of what makes this effect so awesome I'm gonna shift a add a uh, color ramp in here and with the color ramp we're just gonna put a very nice clamp on this thing and put another tick make it black so just a uh, situation where there's a uh, white piece surrounded by two black ones all right 
and let's look at the uh, factor here. So for this, just based off of previous experience, I just want to um, actually we'll come back to that. Sorry. So we connected our viewer here. We'll shift A and add a brightness contrast and we'll interject it here. One of my favorite things about Blender and by playing with the contrast, we can see that we're getting the uh, desired effect of having this circle go in and out. So the next thing from here is I'm going to shift A, add a value. And in the value field, I'm just going to paste in the same value that, um, I mean, the same script that we were talking about. So I should be displaying it on the screen at this point. But we'll just cut to the chase and paste it in here. And so now we can actually stretch down the window one more time, turn this into a timeline, which every time we bring out the timeline, it shows this thing, which just not my timeline. So we close that looks like the timeline. I remember and if we run through the frames, this is what we have so far. So, so far so good. And now at this point we can press uh, shift space, just let it play in perpetuity. And just continue on with uh, getting started here. This time I'm going to bring that mix back that we were talking about. And what I want to do is um, take this, but add the color black. I'm saying it more to myself than to you guys. And we'll plug this into the factor. And now what I'll do is uh, bring out a col converter color ramp and we'll just put that here and let's just catch this on a good frame like right here things are looking uh, especially grim we actually don't want that hard edge to happen so anything to prevent that so let's let it play out now and we have the ring just the ring happening So the next thing from here is to create a ring of fire. So let's uh, bring in a Musgrave texture. We'll snap our viewer up to this thing and let's bring down our view. And we can hold control and scroll through uh, different presets here. You know, we might go for something more experimental than I did on the um, test. And we'll just bring it up here. The next thing from here is we want to go ahead and add a mix and we want to just mix this uh, spherical with it. So the workflow that I'm utilizing here it kind of makes me think back to uh, using the histogram scan and substance designer and how awesome that was for um, pulling out various levels of things, something I wish Blender had. You know, I saw a lot of comments in the last video of people talking about Blender needing a blur node and all these nodes. It's like, yeah, that's the truth, brother. Um, Blender sure does. Blender needs all it can get. So adding a color ramp here, we're now just going to pull it till we get something like this. So the gradient just kind of allows us to get more of that central area. And we let it play. It looks fine. So now we can um, bring down a vector curve. Vector curve is one of my favorites. And we'll just plug that in here. And now we'll just bring down just a, even a noise texture will suffice. We'll connect it up. And just start playing with some of the curves here. In fact, we can snap over to the noise and see what we're giving it, which isn't anything good. Maybe something more like that. We'll bring it down. Let's jump back at it, see what we have here. So looking, looking pretty random, if I say so myself. However, I could always uh, dial some of this back a little bit, but why would I do that? So now from here, we can also throw in something like the um, value here and just connect it up to detail 
And if we look at that play out, we should get something interesting. No. All right, sometimes it's useful to experiment. So we'll just disconnect that using the knife and the redirect. All right, so what do we gotta do here? Uh, let's shift D, duplicate this. Actually, let's shift A, add a new mapping, and we will just interject it here. They won't mind. And which value do we have to move? Probably that one. Or even that one, that one's cool. So I'm just gonna type in pound frame times 0 0.004. And now we have this running effect. And if we jump over to our color ref, we have something like that. However, we of course want to give this the same treatment as we did here, where we have one of these. And then we have the color black being brought over it. So we have two fairly neutral looking pieces here. In fact, I'll pull it out a little bit more. Try to get something a little, a little more interesting for the edge. Just wanted something uh, kind of flowing. So we look at what we have here. We have this. And we could even begin playing with the idea of the uh, final result by using a shift a RGB and we use this as a mask and we put this on top of black and the idea is to just have like kind of this uh, interesting ripple in the wave at the end there and I think we got that so the next thing from here is to bring in the texture for the uh, hex pattern. So I was able to find one online from the uh, Substance Repository, which I'll be using here. When it comes to images in the UV Imager, my favorite way is to just drag them onto the editor like here. Just drag and drop it. And the first thing we'll do is um, bring in a vector mapping node. And let's just work on our third row here. We'll bring down another UV. And let's look at the hex pattern. So we want to change the scale on all of these to maybe like four, maybe three. And we also want to invert it. So instead of invert, we'll use color ramp and just choose to flip it. So now we have our hex pattern. So let's see what we got here to put this together. We have this that is animated. You know what could work is um, we could shift D, duplicate, bring this one down. Just what, actually, this one's created for the purpose of actually creating our mask. So we'll be needing to tweak that. Sorry, I was about to go on a tangent there. So. Let's just use another mix RGB. You can tell I'm a little, little, little heavy-handed with the way that I um, mix these things. I just use classic techniques, um, just black and white and factors. I'm sure there's smarter ways to be going about all of this, which is why I'm excited to be sharing this with all of you, because I look forward to what um, people send me back on Instagram and Twitter. The feedback from the fire tutorial was immense. Um, I was definitely glad to see everyone's work with that. So this is our hex pattern growing in and out. And at this point, we also have this one, which we probably need to add on it. So we'll use color, mix RGB. This will be a primary. This won't be a secondary. And we want to bring in a color white. Now let's see what that looks like. So looking at this, we grow it out and uh, we see there's a little bit of clamping needing to be done there. Not that one, you get out. Uh, 
All right, well, for this one, we're playing with the factor. Okay, we are playing with the right one, but we do need to put some teeth on it, clamp it between white. There we go. And this is something along the lines of what I'm looking for here. We can add more gradient or we can tighten it, which is actually the goal here. And we let this play. And this is our result so far. The next thing is how we're gonna color this thing. Um, it's probably time to think about coloring. We're gonna pull our render panel back out. I'm gonna turn on bloom. And we'll set the intensity to probably regrettable. But the bloom is really what makes these things dazzling and amazing to look at. As you can see right here, it begins looking uh, pretty cool. However, when it comes in, it seems like there's a lot um, being hollowed out here. So we could do something like that. Just pull that tooth back. And now we have, and how soon do we want that ring to go away? Maybe something like that. So it's like, wow, wow. And that to me, I think looks cooler than uh, what we had there. But of course, as you see, you can just play with this tooth here and it will just modify the pattern with our dirty hacks. So now let's um, splash some color on it. That's what we have so far. It also resets my light emission. Seems a little Okay, there we go. I was like, what's going on with my transparency? All right, so let's see how we're gonna get color in here. Let's see what this output is. That It's this one. So let's play with this. In order for this to work, we do need a little bit of um, gradient in there. So I'm trying to think the easiest way to do that is um, probably mix this. So we'll use a mix RGB, just interject it here. And we'll grab a spherical gradient. It's almost hard to see the right node sometimes. And we have something like that. And then we can use the um, color ramp converter. And we have some values to um, mess with here. Of course we can clamp it all out, but we have something happening in here and we can make it even more emphasized if needed as you'll see so just get some real hot values in here some say too hot for blender we can't pull that at all so let's bring the orange in let's bring the red in and also if we um, mess with our factor a little bit. We could probably do this even better. So let's think about it. Um, I wish I could see what this output input was. Actually, I know what I want to do. I want to put this here. And then look at what we, nope. All right, let me control X and rethink that. All right. All right, that's our output that we're messing with. Let's try and multiply. We probably just need to change the blend mode. I didn't need to panic like I did. I get, I get fidgety with nodes. All right, and I have to create my color ramp again. Jeez, I really not punish me. That's all right, we'll just pick better colors this time. Let's add another tick, added two ticks, fine. We can roll with that.
there we go we got something like that going on so there's a point in which we connect our grid up here we'll just replace it with this remove that and we look at it and we have that and because our material set to be so so dim it's not very impressive but now this is our result so far and we could just keep playing with this and tweaking it until the end however let's say that we wanted to um, add some more control to this because you know it got a little chaotic there I mean I wanted to do a video where it showed me actually playing with the notes themselves so you guys kind of have an idea of my thought process because uh, for me it's just color ramps and using a function that um, I mean using a um, scripted expression in order to get things moving and that's really uh, where the magic comes in so let's look at our fire ring our ring of fire which is this thing looking crazy might I add however this thing comes out here and then becomes a um, becomes a factor and so because of that over here is where we want to actually make this thing fight And this thing's actually choosing how much of this gets brought over. Which actually makes this look a lot crazier. It means we could just change this. And that'll just be our outside value. But what if we wanted a, a little more variation to it than that? Because, you know, simple colors is simple. You know, let's say we want something uh, really complex going on here. So that's what we have. Uh, we turn on turn off bloom. We see what we actually have. We see there's some values in there we could play with. I mean, really scraping the barrel for values to play with here. I know, but this is my life now. You know, people wanted a tutorial of it. Now you've got it. The gritty truth. Um, but I, I do see that um, this is definitely a good way to party in 2.9. I uh, mean 2.8 is uh, just partying with planes, just going in there and just having a fun time with just playing with materials because as you see, it's just colors and values, just there's nothing to it. Um, so after this, you know, I'll be able to link people to this video and be like, you know, just, just go watch it. Just go give it a try, you guys. Um, so let's take this and plug it here and let's see what we got kind of a psychedelic let's see we could probably do something about some of these colors here let's add another tick let's make this tick really white put some hot values in there and we probably want to put a uh, yellow one here if we're gonna keep making fire tones I wish I could um well I guess I could duplicate it and put it there like that and then now both of these ramps are um, shared and then if I really wanted some uh, finer control we could always put a um, hue saturation and with these I could quickly just change the hue to um, adjust the colors that we have here and of course without bloom this thing's boring again we set to something like that give it a hot of two give it a clamp of two on the end I mean I give it a bloom of two on the intensity and we have something like this going on here which I think could be a um, really interesting effect for you know I've been looking at thinking about like robot eyes and um, stuff like that also HUD systems and computer stuff force fields however I got to make it where it can react to things happening in the viewport that would make it ultimately awesome so those are things that I'm pondering on with it however before I wrap this thing up I'm going to turn off overlays and we're just going to add a couple of modifiers um, first one I'll add is a displace I'm not going to use hard ops for it we'll just move this up to Z move it up one and then we'll put a subdivision surface on it keep it simple add a couple and um you know let's turn on wires that way you know what's going on here 
And the reason I have to displace it up one and then put a subdivision is so I can put a cast on it and set the sphere to a factor of one. Let's see, did I do that right? There we go. We just want it to be um, just slightly curved. That's all, non-destructively of course, because people love it so much. And we turn off overlays and now this is our force field effect. So with that, um, you know, I'll zoom out, let you see the grid. You know, really it's nothing complex here. You know, really basic textures. You know, I hope to come back and show some more stuff that I've been messing with. I've been kind of on a procedural texture craze lately ever since uh, that video about Eris Fire. But with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.